Matthew chapter 21, verses 8 through 11. Today we're not going to preach about that, but we're going to use that for our text and our springboard. Matthew chapter 21, verses 8 through 11. We encourage you to come to and let the Lord speak to you today that you might be saved. For in times like these, you might be saved. So I invite you to just be honest with yourself and be honest with the Lord. If we were done this morning, how many of us would we have? That's a question worth asking. And I ask you to ask it every second. Verse 8, and a great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitude that went before and followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Great theological questions are being asked today and are being programmed for us to believe that we are growing in our relationship to Jesus. They tell us that, that the numbers are growing uh, in some ways, but yet they tell us the church is in decline. Our, our sermon text today, we find in this particular scripture, and it's not about Jesus so much being uh, coming in in the great welcoming God. But we want to use that to, to show how excited we can be about Jesus for the time being. How we get all giddy about our relationship to him. And then somehow or another, the multitudes and those that give everything they have and spread their coats in the way and, and sang Hosanna to him, glory to God in the eyes, uh, yell, Christopher, Christopher. Crucified. Because that's where these multitudes ended up, yelling, crucified. They were the ones who had responded to the last invitation that was given. They were the ones that had pulled their coats off and had given their all to walk with Jesus, but crucified. 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 You see, they set out with good intentions. But I'm afraid this morning, some of you have set out with good intentions. Some are absent that set out with good intentions. But where are they today? Crucify him. Crucify him. You see, how can, how can we have, how can we be so different at, from time to time? How can we be so different about our relationship to this Jesus? For the Bible says he never changes. He's the same today, yesterday, and will be forever. There's nothing about him that is different at any time that you talk to him. His word, he doesn't change his word. He, everything about him is truth. He's never told a lie. He promised to never leave us. He's always been with us. He promised to go and prepare a place, and he has. And the Bible said he's coming soon. He's coming soon. He told his disciples when they were troubled that he was going to be leaving them. Don't, don't fret about leaving. I will come again. Don't be troubled about the fact that I'm going. Be rejoice about the hope that I'm coming back. Uh, they get you that you can be where I am. That's what he said. If there's anything that we ought to want in life today, it ought to be Jesus. Amen. Above everything, above anybody, Jesus ought to be the first in our life. I'm just telling you, he, he is it. And, and he, he has come that we might have life. He told the Father, he said, Father, these are mine. I in them and I in you and they in us. And we're all together. We're one. I, I, 
I'm willing to lay my life down for these people. I'm willing to pay the debt of sin they can't pay. I'm willing to help them where they're hurting the most. I'm willing to be to them what they can't be and do for them what they can't do. I'm willing to be an heir with these people. But these people seemingly were not as willing to be an heir with him as he was with them. Because the excitement wore off. The longer you keep a nickel in your pocket, a new nickel hit begins to go. And it's, you've heard people say, uh, shining like a, a new nickel. That's what happens. We get so excited. Everybody line, we line up and everybody hugs and cries and prays over us when we say we make a profession of faith. We are so excited. Everybody's excited. It's a smart slinging day at the church when somebody gives their heart to Christ. Amen. It's a glory hallelujah. It's what it is just as it was today. Jesus, uh, they call it the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. As he made his way in, this is the crowd that greeted him on his way in. And you know, we greet him. We greet him in the same way. We're so happy. You know, but I know life is difficult for every one of us. The Apostle Paul, who was one of the greater of the apostles, if there is such a thing. But he was a great, he was a great man of God. And here's what he said. I have trouble living the life I have to live. I have trouble every day living the life I have to live. I'm always doing what I ought not to do for what I would not I do. And what I would not that I do and, and what I ought to do I don't do. And so it, it, Paul was saying it, I just get it tangled up and turned around and reversed in my life. So we can see how, how a man of God as great as he and one who is committed to him as he did. If he had trouble, we, we're going to have trouble walking in the good old highway. We're going to have trouble with the issues and the ills that come up every day in our life. We're, just, we're going to have to drink dirty water sometimes. That's just, I mean, that's just life. Everybody has to live out a life which you've been granted and given by God. Everybody has to has been a, a call put on your life. He's called you to a work in a ministry if you're a child of his. And so we all have, we, we, those things should never, these things that come to us in life should never hinder us in our service to him. Should never stop us. A new husband, a new baby, a new this, a new that should never stop us from doing what we know to do right because we are children of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, those are the things we discuss about. We don't like to discuss them. We think people are, are trying to uh, correct us, but let me tell you something. We need to discuss them. We need for people to encourage us because if we don't, we're going to be standing at the gate hollering crucify him. We're going to be down the road with this multitude who didn't love him like they thought they loved him. Who even at the end were not willing to give what they thought they were willing to give. And they fell by the wayside. Y'all got to understand we are that people in that multitude. You've got to understand we were the ones who were to give anything. And we were the ones who, who raised our hands and shouted Hosanna to him. We were the very ones. And where did they find us? How could they find us? We weren't nowhere to be found. Yeah, can y'all not see that? Can you not understand that it's not to deprive you of, of, of your social life and your weekends and your vacations and all that you take and all that you do? But it, yeah, I'm telling you, what are we supposed to do to deprive him? What are we supposed to do? Yeah, let him have a place if nothing else we have to do in our life we need to do. What's going to happen to the church if, if we don't have a commitment to Jesus? What's going to happen to the church if we don't claim what we say we have in Jesus? Amen? Everybody's always talking about revival. I don't want no revival. We couldn't handle it here because we ain't got nobody to help revive nobody. I'm being as honest and fair as I could be before you this morning, just as honest as I know how to be. We're not ready for revival. We won't have revival until we get ready for revival. And God will then, uh, he will send us new sheep to be a shepherds to if we will just ourselves live and be the people we ought to be. Oh, we threw our coat down. We waved the branches and the bushes. But what are we doing now? So 
but I just wish, I mean, I love to hear that somebody got saved, I love to hear it. But you know, saved people, the Bible says, are new people in Christ. Everything is old and all is new when we come to Jesus. I just want to tell you something. If you're here today and you have a drug problem and you smoke, you can't quit drugs without quitting smoking. Bro, you're still a drug addict. Now, I know you that smoke are going to get red-faced and all mad, but I'm telling you, if you smoke, you, you hung up on nicotine, which is a drug. So quit pointing your fingers. Amen? Amen. So don't, don't go on a program trying to get well if you've got a pack of cigarettes in your pocket. You, you got a drug fight the drug. You got drugs. You got to get rid of drugs. You can't, when you see your friend run around the corner and smoke a weed with them in the name of Jesus. You know what I'm talking about? You make your mind up. You want to quit what you're doing, quit in the name of Jesus. Tell him, Lord, this is yours. I don't have to do this anymore. I am not going to do it. I, I don't have to have a cigarette to be a person. I don't have to take a pill to be somebody. To get over my past. I don't have to smoke weeds. And, and hey, I don't need that stuff because I have Jesus. He took it away from me. He died for me. He took it away. And I don't have to be a slave to that kind of stuff. Amen? Amen. And so when we, we see this stuff and we hear this stuff and we look at life, those are the things. Hey, I just said that. I don't smoke no more, but I can tell you some other things. I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about us. I'm talking about the multitude that screamed that day and welcomed him. I'm talking about that multitude that, that had everything going their way that day. Here he is. They had heard of him. In fact, they said the whole place wanted to know who this was that had come and stirred him up. And they told who he was. It's Jesus. It's Jesus of Nazareth. He's come in. They heard about Jesus. Well, oh, let me tell you, folks, I can't. With all he did, I don't know how he couldn't have been heard of. With all the people he touched, I don't know how that everything couldn't have been. Everybody around should have, should have known about Jesus. I mean, but you know what? Somehow or another, I mean, if somebody brought a man on and tore the roof off of your house, your home, I was over there at your house, but and a revival broke out. And they brought somebody. The crowd got so big we couldn't get in your house. They tore the roof off your home over there and led him down so that we could pray over him. Don't you know that everybody around here would know about that? Huh? Yeah, they would know about it. Hey, what do they know about at New Horizon Church, what's going on with us? What are you telling about our church? What are you telling about the Lord Jesus Christ who is the, is the church? He, the church is Jesus. And he's ahead of it. That's what the scripture says. He's ahead of, of church. We are a part of the church. He's ahead. Have we talked about the roof being? Ain't nobody been healed off no bed here. You know why nobody's seeking to be healed off no bed? We got some help. I'll tell you, Ronnie and Sherry got some good news the other day. We ought to shout about it. Trish is going to have good news and have worse over. Well, I'm telling you, you just got to hold the, get the faith and hang your hat on it. Amen. Then don't waver. What are we wavering for? Amen. You're going to be better off if you go than if you stay. So why fret about what the results are going to be? If you love the Lord Jesus Christ, man, I want to tell you something. For me to die is pain, the Apostle Paul wrote. I'll tell you right now, you think this life here is good. Wait till you see the strip of pristine glory when you get to be with my Lord there in heaven. Oh, I want to see him. I'll tell you, one day you'll get to go. You've got to die to get there. Y'all know that? you got to die to get to heaven. To the flesh that you can live in the spirit. Ain't that good news? Praise the Lord. We're going to have some more here shortly. Let them cry. Amen. That's going to be a singer right there. I believe now. Praise the Lord. Sign her up. Of course, you get old enough to get God exhausted me. I'm going to tell you right now that that's where you start. You describe your name in the halls of, of God's church. That's where you bring up. 
It don't matter if you try. You got them running no slop around. Ring. It don't matter what old balky nosy Christian turns to look every time they make a little noise. They tell them to look the other way and shut up. <laughs> Amen. I tell you, you go to a chicken house and you beat it, every one of them beat it. You go to a, a, a kennel, every dog is there barking. Come to church and everybody needs a rescue unit because they act like they did. Amen. 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 But everybody does what they're supposed to do, but who? Wow. Everybody's is glorifying God, but uh, I got they have more music in my yard than they are in the church. Those birds know all the songs to glorify the creator. And when they get hungry, he sends them some seed worms that they feed right out of my yard. Isn't that awesome? Don't think my birds don't like stinky feet. Amen? Who so run the shoes out of them? They live for months. I told them that I'd get my feet amputated if they had to feel that bad. Amen? But God is good. He's an awesome God. I can almost, when I was in this, this last night and last week, it just came to my mind. I said, God, the world, Lord, am I going to present this thing to our church? And, and I. Lord said, put yourself where they were at. Put yourself in this message. Because this message is you. This message is you, and you've got to get yourself into it to understand the impact of it. Just how soon we can go from good standing to a place where we hate you. A place where we turn our back on Jesus. Oh, we might scrub and eat a little every once in a while, but Generally speaking, the, the sting and the, of the victory that we have in Jesus kind of wears off, and, and we forget all about the glorious day. You see, it came to be. They weren't wanting him to come. In the end, they weren't wanting him to go. In fact, the Bible says they took a stone. A stone. Everywhere he went, they even one time wanted to push him off of a high place where he was. Kill him. All that, all that stuff that happened coming in, look what's happening going out. I'm afraid there's some there. I'm afraid that we're not careful. He's talking about us. I'm afraid if we don't, if we don't pay attention to that. Like we pay attention to so many things. If we don't pay attention to, to, to that, we'll be upset. We'll be one of those people. And before you do it, our lives will be visible. And when, we, when our lives are visible, all the people around us are visible. I, I tell you right now, your children will be miserable. You're miserable. Your relationships will be miserable if you're miserable. You see, that's what happened. That's what happened, and that's what's happening. The Bible calls it a great falling away. If you call that a great falling away, uh, when those people turn against Jesus the way they did, I'll call it a great falling away. It says that in the end, it would be a great falling away. All they have to turn to Jesus with our joy have turned away from him to some sadness. They turned away from him, and they turned to the same, if you're not for me, he said, you're against me. And, and that's just the way it is, and that's what happened. That's what is happening. It's a process. If it all had happened one time, we'd be more aware of it. But it happened so slowly, it, one by one. The lion don't eat everything out there in the forest to eat at one time. He eats them one by one. And so he started with the wheat. And I, I saw just yesterday uh, the, the lion. Uh, it was the lion king. I mean, these two lions jumped up on one of these old buffaloes out there. And it's a huge dude. And they would bit his tail off, but he won the war. I'm telling you right now, that roaring lion's going to jump on some of us stronger and he's going to lose. Yeah. It was, and that's what the Bible says. Paul told Timothy, he says, you stronger men, you stronger women, get out there. The devil's biting their tails off and y'all ain't doing nothing. Get out there and help them fight that roaring lion. They're weak. Who's strong? 
When you established into faith, you have more strength than you could ever imagine. You have, you have words to speak power into people's lives. Amen. You can, the condemnation, you can speak life where there's death. I'm telling you, the Bible said there, that death is in the tongue. Death and life is there. Life and death. And we can, we can have it either way we want. We can speak failure right here this morning. You want to fail? Say, I want to fail. I'm going to be a failure. If you want to keep on like you're going, say, I can't do what, I, what is required of me. You, you won't be able to do it. But when you real flip over there and say, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me, you'll be able to accomplish everything God has in store for you. You'll be able to see victory in your children, in your homes, in your business, in your employment. You'll see in your health, you'll see victory. You see this? I'm going to tell y'all something. The Bible talks about the apothecary. Apothecary is a place where they do medicine. They'll know that, right? Farm. But it says, is there no bomb in guilt? That question is asked. Is there no bomb? Bomb is that which heals. Of course, the writer in Isaiah and Jeremiah, those writers are talking about spiritual healing. The people of God have gotten sick spiritually. That's what happened here. They, they praised and spread the, the thing, but then they got sick. And then the Lord asked the question, is there not a bomb in Gilead? Why are my people still sick? And he answered, yes, there's a bomb. There's a hope. When we get weak, there's a hope because God gives us that hope. Amen? That God has prepared a way. And, and the problem of it is we don't like the the way God has prepared. We don't like the word God has given. And so we, that's why we have trouble doing what God wants us to do if we disagree with him. But we can't disagree with him when he's, everything he does and says is true. We can't disagree with him. So if we do, we are opposing him. And that's what happens. And so, uh, you know, uh, we have the confusion comes when we, we see all these people rep representing Massive groups of people, multitudes, didn't it say multitudes in there? We see these cathedrals uh, built all over our land. You go to any major city and they, they reach almost to the sky. It seems like uh, the steeples do of these huge cathedrals that are so formal and so decked out with, with all the preparation of man. But God, they, God is not there. They, they've got a form and a book. Read the book and follow the book, not the word of God. And the way of man has gotten us to a place, and we so different, we find ourselves arguing over who's right instead of receiving the Lord Jesus Christ who's all of God. In every circumstance, it, it don't matter where you go to church, you can go to church anywhere, but Jesus is the hope for all men. You can, I'm telling you, if he ain't been preached and lifted up, he said, if I've been lifted up, I'll draw men. If he's not being extolled as number one, then you're in the wrong house in the wrong place, with the wrong group of people. I'm going to tell you right now. And if you have to use anything other than Jesus Christ to win people, then you're at the wrong house. Y'all understand that? That's why we have so much trouble. And that, that I follow the Lord's Prayer. I, I just read that every day. That's the part of my Bible study. Uh, well, I read it every day. Uh, it's, it's in Matthew. I would start at verse 7. It says, when you pray. Don't pray like these people do. Long prayers and all that. Day. But pray to the Father. And here's what you pray. Our Father. Which are you? And he goes on to the Lord's prayer. And then it says, at the end of two verses that I read, it says, and if we don't forgive our Brothers, they're trespassing. Then our Father won't forgive us of our sins or whichever version you do. And so, you see, all we got to do is learn how to keep the joy of the entrance of Jesus in our home. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're attending church, there's no one. You would think, coming from me, you hear it all the time. I'm like a broken president. 
I, I must be an angel because I harp all the time. Y'all get that right? But that's what I do, and that's what I'm supposed to do, and I don't apologize for that. I'm supposed to be your reminder. I'm supposed to be your reminder and the guardian of your soul as long as God has given you, me, this place here, this special place, this church, this pastor. Uh, he gave you a gift. He gave me a call. Amen. Amen. He said, I'm gifted them with you. I said, what if they don't like the gift? He said, I'll, that's my end of it. Amen. But, uh, but that's the way things happen. But I, I think, you know, just get him back. Just get him back uh, where we welcome him into our life. we got to get back there. And like I said, attending is part of it, but it's not the first and most important thing. I mean, somebody that you really love and that you welcome into your life and give them complete possession of you. You ought to talk along with that person all the time. Amen? I mean, really. Uh, you ought to talk with Jesus, right? Uh, because the Bible says he lives in you. It's like Brother Randy preached. The little girl said, well, if he's, if God's all that, then he ought to stick out of me, right? And, uh, absolutely, God ought to stick out of you. If he lives in you. So that's who you talk to every day. You know what? You know what I've learned to do? Lord, I'm having doubt about some stuff. Could you please help me today not to have any doubt? Because it don't matter how much faith you've got, that some days you're gonna be weird and we'll do. You're gonna you're gonna wonder. And I say, Lord, you you know my wondering. I'm not I'm just, you just got to be honest about it. You know, uh, there are days I have to say to him, and I don't want no amens on this, but Lord, I know I'm hard to get along with. Amen. And we, we have those discussions. And, and coming back to that place, I'll tell y'all something. Boy, that day at the Brentwood Baptist Church, I won't ever forget that. That was when the triumphant entry of Jesus into my heart and into my life. I don't ever forget it. I ain't never squalled as much in my life as I squalled that day. Y'all know what squalling is? That's not a, a wind blowing. That means it's not tears running all down my face. I mean, my heart was completely broken, but yet completely renewed. I was crying tears of, 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 of just great joy, and I was throwing my coat down in front of Jesus so that he could walk in. That he could come into my heart. I want you to know that I just loved him so much that day to this day. I built a little room on my our little house, our little bungalow, and I, it's probably still there. Right there behind me, right there beside the church, two houses down on Denver Avenue. I built a little room there, a little couch right there, and I could get up and just get up in the morning before I got out of the house and just have that joy. I get up in the morning at our house and have that joy in Jesus. Sometimes I pray, sometimes I But I get up and have that joy. You'll have that joy of Jesus. The whisper of Jesus will be there when you get up in the morning looking for it. Amen. Amen. That's what happens. I, and you get up. How many of you wives look for your husbands to come home? No, oh, God, they're not up. Don't, don't you husbands look for the ones who did <laughs> But, I mean, you know, y'all know what I'm saying. You look out the window and watch them go. I know I was, when, they, when Chris and Orlando we had to bring some grandbabies, uh, Judy was taking the stand at the window and said, What's wrong with Daddy Lee? And they watch, and they look, they want you to take them when they bring them over here and stay with us. Watch them leave. Watch them leave. And then when they, when they come back that afternoon, that evening to pick them up, their little eyes get gay so big. They're running. But there's daddy, and they get really excited. That's the way it would be in a relationship. Our eyes were to get real big when we realize that Jesus is right there with us all the day. That joy that we had that day, that, that Brentwood Baptist Church experience that I had, I'm telling you, it's right there in my heart all the time because I remember the day. You know, that wasn't just for me. That wasn't just for me. Because in that, in that church, the Lord used that as a, as some, as a witness and blessing to that church. 
You see, God is doing these things. I'm not at that church anymore, but that church is still there. It's still there. I, I've often wanted to go back to the Paul College that I used to love to love. Young Christian. I was so happy to be in that hallway that I would sing and cry right down the hallway and put the floor so it would be worshipful. Cleaning up the trash can, scrubbing the nasty commotion. I loved it because that was what Jesus said. He's my garment now, but he's my walk now. I'll always remember that. And that's the way I am here. Wherever I am, I always want to. I realize that I threw my garment now and I don't want to be there dealing with him. So it's the choice. You got to look for him. You got to look, you got to be hunting for him to have that joy. These people here, they really started out well with good intentions. They started out with good intentions. I want to tell you something. I got a testimony. Good intentions. They won't get you. Meaning to give up something and not do it. Meaning to turn over a new leaf. January's coming, everybody's going to make some resolutions. No, but we'll still eat candy bars. Then next year, there'll be a rump bigger than we've ever had. <laughs> because we didn't keep our eating. Amen? That's the truth. I'm a little bit testimony. <laughs> and y'all don't help a bit. I want y'all to know people always be willing to. Reese's Cups and Hershey Bars with that. Well, I found out something. What I do is catch them. I put them in the cabinet at home, and every now and again I'll see on TV over there. <laughs> huh? Hey, that worked out pretty good. You know, the strength of you know that? What we do does affect us. What we do does affect us, and it will affect us. And, and they start picking up what we do. Amen? The sad part of this story, and I hate to tell y'all, is what, how he called it to you. I've had people in every church I've ever had tell me about other people who used to be faithful in that church. I mean, the doors were open and they were open. If you needed anything done, all you had to do was call them up. In fact, they, for some of them, many of them used to teach Sunday school and were even deep. But now they're gone. Stuff happened to them. Now they're gone. Preacher, what do you reckon happened to them? Do you think they were ever saved? Hey, I think that's happened to me in 1892. I can't do that. I can't make that decision. Even though your mind goes to the scriptures that tell you that you, hey, if they don't been with us, they, they want to bless you. That's what the scripture says. In fact, Paul says that. And it did be a force. Hey, what you mean? And I said, if you for Jesus, how are you going to turn your back on Jesus? How are you going to turn away from him, no matter what's going on in your life? You see, in Jesus, people turn to Jesus when they make mistakes. They don't get to turn away from people. They turn to Jesus. And when you turn to Jesus, he's going to put you on the straight gate. <coughs> turn the other cheek. Give me in the coat. Go to the second mile. In other words, quit pointing your finger. Except on yourself. Love your neighbor as I have loved you and you love yourself. You see, that's the way that goes. And that, that's what that's all about. But what happens is all that stuff I've told y'all already comes up and swells up in our life. We get turned off with people or turned off with something that's going on, and we give up. Things are so strangled and tore up in our own homes and our own lives, we ain't worth a dime than nobody else. And that happens all the time. You see, if you just do this, let's talk about a wealth. People like to talk about wealth. So I'm just going to go give you a little list of things here, and we'll get to the Jesus thing. What about wealth? Well, uh, and Jesus walked among these people. Some of these people were very wealthy. In fact, he said, 
And when they were sitting, if you remember there in, in the churchyard, watching them give that tax that they had to pay to the church, whatever that tax was, we don't know what it was. Uh, but they have served many people coming, many people going. And some of those people they have served with the wealth of men. And they gave very little, but they, stopped, they had this little old widow. And here's this quote, widow of mine. That means not very much. And so, and when you start putting all this in, like, well, if you want wealth, give away everything you got. And I'm telling you, it says it's not like I'm trying to. But I'm trying to. I mean, just if, if you really, God said, try to see, I'll well, open up the window of heaven. Every treasure in heaven. And he says, I'll pour out a money. But who here is willing to do that? We go just the other way around. We, we, go, we say, well, I'm going to get together with this uh, financial advisor, and I'm going to put so much here and so much there. You don't know that cancer that's growing in your rear end. That's about to kill you. But you're going to put it out here instead of giving it to God, and just every bit of it is going to be taken away from you on those hospital visits where you get that $8,500 thing that you've got to take every week for about 35 weeks. Boom, there goes all your planting out the window. Hello. My ears start looking back in here. You make me just swing that. But that's what happens. Not anything. Okay, let's, let's just take it relationships. Here's what we do we got wrong relationships. Here's a wrong relationship a man and a woman living together outside of marriage. That's a wrong relationship. We want God to bless it, but he'll never bless that relationship. Sex before marriage. God will never bless sex before marriage. Now, hey, you ought to forgive it, but he won't bless it. So I just, you know, this is clean no air to nobody, but I just want you to listen to me. We want, we want a blessed life. We want to live the life that we live in Jesus Christ and get back to putting our garments on the floor before him. He won't do it. And so in our relationship, how do you want to be treated love? That's the way you act. In the relationship. I found out about myself, when you're hard to get along with, it hurts relationship. When your way is the only way that's important, it hurts conversation and relationship. Two people in a relationship, in a marital relationship is a equal relationship. And if one dominates the other, it's not a right relationship with the Lord. Do I need to repeat that? If one tries to dominate the other, it's not a relationship that God blessed. So I just want you to know, if you like to be a woman that he takes your husband, you're in a wrong relationship. If you're a, a man that, that, that loves to dominate your wife in a non-biblical way, you're in the wrong relationship. They just ain't no excuse for you. If you're reading the Bible, it talks about our relationships with men and women and our relationships all around. It talks about all these things and that we need to think about them. So I, I had this couple, we're going to get married, found out that the, he wasn't a Christian. He's, and so he says, what do I do? I said, I, I'll lead you to the Lord. But he, I led him to the Lord, but they're not together today. You see, doing what we need to do to meet the requirements of a relationship is not that easy. Christian people, and God said, light and darkness cannot go together. What fellowship have, have light and darkness or what fellowship? You can't do it. you got to, if a Christian is looking for a lover, a, a mate for a, a marriage relationship, what you do is uh, you've got to have somebody that is a Christian too. Because you can see how it's going to pull, amen? You can see how one's going to one's gonna try to pull them one to Christ and one's going to try to pull them that away. We have, I, we have relationships in our church right now just like that. 
People have been pulled away because of relationships. How's it going in? I have no idea. But so there you go with relationships. There you go with wealth. The very thing. And, and you know what? Uh, we unemployed our working relationship. We know we're very fortunate right now. We've never had a time when we have so many jobs available for so many people. And that's I, we're not going to call nobody's name. Who's the critic gets it? But I'm just telling you, there's work everywhere now. You in, anywhere in the country, you work, you get work now. Works everywhere. It may not be the dream job you wanted, supervisor, with all the benefits and three hundred thousand a year, but there's a job available. And so, but here's what you pray for, Lord. I want to work where you want me to work. That my life will better influence people that are around me so I can help them. I, I want to be Lord where you want me to be. I know somebody here this morning, they've got to be where the Lord wants them. They wouldn't put up with the bull they put up with every day. I can call her name. Go, you go in and the devil standing there and you look at him every time you go in the door. That's a bad word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we pray about all that stuff. Some of us want to be a heart surgeon but God wants us to be a mm -hmm. dog kid. Mm -hmm. Amen. We parents want to go out. We don't want to go to the so. We don't want to go to Africa and be a missionary either. Who in the world is going to go meet missionaries if your kids can't go? Amen? Amen. Amen. I, I just, I'm just telling you. I told somebody this week, we were saying, I said 95% of the people you talk to want their way, and they'll take, they'll take things over you. 95% or 99% will do it for themselves before they'll do it for you. And that's exactly what the Bible said. It said men will love themselves more than they even love God. Am I hitting him anything, Brother B? Amen. Brother B, I see you right there. We need to pray for him for the year. But y'all see where all this is going. Now I want you to go back to the group. Here's a parade. Somebody has a parade this week. We went to a parade. I know y'all got somebody to do it. You know, it's just a parade. Parade is fun, huh? We had a parade. And, and I, well, I, I would have thought, you know, that Jesus would have had good at his poetry. But he had a sad day. Being the girl out in the back. You know that kind of thing. <laughs> and Jesus was riding on the same But let me tell you something. The truth is, we'll be cut off the third time. We make new relationships with people. We'll do anything for them out of the time. And then all of a sudden, it turns we couldn't. Yeah. And we back away. Yeah. We back away. And people don't know how to receive that. Why do you back away? That's what happened. They throw that car off. Of course, them people had to be in it before they had to be broom. If men were like that, they would be in the world. And I guess that's what they threw them in. That's what they would do. And then, uh, Chad and I were just, before church, we stood out there all these palms. They cut the leaf and things off the palm. And they put them in the way. My streets must have been dirty, muddy, so they didn't want our shame to have to walk in that dirt. That's how excited they were about me. And now here's the thing. They gave me their faith. I just want to say, on an average morning in our church, we have 10 people. Thank you. 
hard to do. You may not be able to. You know what I'm saying? Think about Jesus. Keep that. Keep Jesus in your heart. And when the dark night comes, you can sing. When the bright sun might come, you can sing. Because you, you got Jesus. The truth cut down for you. The truth runs from you. But in the end, now listen. Two things come. In the end, Then there may be some here, like Alice Holmes. Alice Holmes has lupus today. She's still living. She's probably too high to see in her. She said, please, thank you. God sent you. God sent you.
somebody's here and you've made that connection, you can become a Christian. You can come. Or you might be free to come. Or you might be that form of pastor who got saved in the revival meeting. That deacon who had served all those years. That choir leader who repented during that invitation. Maybe that might be you this time. But whoever you are, as we stand together, what we're coming to you. Just as I am, you come. There he is. I've got to let him You come. I've got something for you. Let me do it. Help me best I can. Help me best I can.